you know, say what you will about me. But if it's one thing that I don't shy away from, it's talking about things that go on in the Tarkov community that other people might not necessarily want to discuss because it rocks the boat. See, I have a reputation with the developers of somebody that's disliked because I tend to talk about the things that most other people would shy away from for fear that they might end up in the not so good graces of the development team. This is going to be one of those videos. I will say that this is going to be a little bit tempered because there is no actual way to tell exactly what happened based on the footage that was provided as well as the response that came from BSG. That being said, I still believe that this is important to share because it shines a light on the fact that the human element still comes into play. And make no mistake, exactly what the title of the video says is, or at least it appears, to be what happened. The user interesting ad 1513 posted on Reddit about eight hours ago. I was playing with my friend on customs. My friend died to an admin, which is a blue name with a little blue gear cog icon next to it. If you've ever seen a BSG podcast where Demurka ends up going into a, a game or a raid, they have a blue cog icon next to their name to denote them being a dev. Sherpas have a green handshake icon. Emissaries have like a purple globe or ball looking thing. He killed him right afterward. I was supposed, or I was just about to go loot the guys I killed when I got disconnected and permanently banned. I was told there's no point in writing EFT developers as they never answer, so I hope I'll get visibility from developers here. He then posted this image of his friend who died from this guy, Borus, and then posted this streamable link to where it's a video of him that he pulled from Shadowplay that's unfortunately only about a half a minute long, where it, it shows him going in and, and getting the kill. Oh, Okay, now, I want to run this back. Because, to me, there doesn't look like any, there's any sus gameplay here at all. Right here is that first interaction on the stairs. The guy, the, the dev, is the person at the top of the stairs that got clapped right as he was coming up. So he, he had made a peek, heard some movement, and you can hear him actually emote. Right there. He goes, Mrr. right? So it's a bear player that decides that he's going to emote. As he's coming up the stairs, right here on the right, you can see the light wash from his flashlight. So he automatically assumes that there's an angle somewhere up in here of a guy shining a flashlight down the, uh, the stairwell. And as he comes up, he looks forward, looks upward, and you can see the flashlight bulb right here. And he just kind of fires into that flashlight bulb and ends up hitting him in the face as he strafes underneath the stairwell. Now to me, that doesn't look like sus play. And this is also compressed video. You have to remember that even localized recordings, especially if it's using shadow play, it's, it's designed in a way where it's supposed to save resources but still allow you to catch like certain moments so that you can get your own highlight reels together. That is done in a much lower resolution at a lower bit rate than whatever is being displayed on the monitor of the gamer at the time. So what we are seeing is something that is going to be compressed and is going to have less detail and less color depth as a result of what he is actually able to see on his screen. So he very likely had more definition than what we are able to discern from what we're seeing here. Secondarily, as he goes down this stairwell, he checks the body first to see, yep, I got the kill. And then you hear metal on the left. There's somebody walking on metal stairs to his left. And then you can hear another set of steps on his right when he comes back down the stairs. Right here. Right there, you hear steps on wood or whatever it is. Borus. His, his uh, buddy that got killed says Borus. It's the name of the dev. And he can hear gun rattling on the right. I can hear gun rattling on the right. So he goes down to make a quick check. 
which is exactly what you should do. He's got his laser on and everything. And he takes a shot and ends up getting a lucky headshot on that first fire right here. Just boom. He ends up dinging him right in the face. And it was just a good shot. You know, he had it, he had it lined up on the barrel as it kicked up and he caught him in the head on that first round. None of that to me looks like there's any kind of like snapping going on. There doesn't look like there's any like immediate barrel adjustments. Uh, none of this rings sus to me. It just looks like he had a good barrel positioning. He had it centered well. He had good point fire in both of the situations and he tracked his targets effectively using auditory cues. That's what I see. Following this, he posted a f second video of him looting his kills, and one of the things that Shadowplay will do is you can either hotkey it or it will do it automatically, but he ended up hotkeying it when he died. Huh? Ah. There. So... One of the questions that somebody had asked me earlier when I first reviewed this was why he didn't have Borus's dog tag in his stuff yet. And what it looks like is he ended up dropping this guy, who was the dude standing down on the hallway on two that he shot in the top of the head, and he ended up looting his, his body instead. So from here, he also posted a picture of the ban email that he got from Tarkov saying that it was using circumvention tools uh, or using bots, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which he obviously claims that he doesn't. What I will say is that we only have that footage. I even went into the Reddit thread and responded early on in the thread's lifespan to ask the original poster if he had any additional footage outside of just those two 45 or 30 second windows. He said no, he only keeps a 45 second window when he hits his hotkey to save those videos so that, you know, he pulls the moments from the highlights. It was obviously then suggested by people that weren't me that he should increase that time span to something like five to 10 minutes so that he can get, you know, the full encompassing picture for instances just like this one. Now, this account, user some BSG guy, started responding in line to this thread, saying that can't imagine such a thing could happen. We'll have a look. Thanks for sharing this case. Now, since then, he has come back and said that he's a BSG employee. He doesn't have any flair, but it gives him more space and opportunity, he says. Uh, they're watching related socials, etc., 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 and he came back and said to consider him a friend, no need for official status. Uh, the guy got unbanned and the situation is solved. And he said, and I quote, false alarm triggered. No one has banned him intentionally. Now, I find this to be very interesting. Hey, editor one peg here. So one other thought as I was editing this down occurred to me. Developers in Tarkov are denoted as such because they have special icons and special badges. Cheat software providers, almost all of them, as I have been told and am aware of it, and I had some screenshots at one point in time that showed me this, have user interfaces that will show on the UI whether or not somebody has a developer badge. It's one of the reasons why emissaries and Sherpas always say that they don't really detect any Tarkov cheaters when they play, because the cheaters avoid them. The belief from the cheat side of things is that it's a surefire way to get yourself banned. So they have a user interface that shows them whether or not somebody is a Sherpa, an emissary, or a developer. By using that logic, if this guy were a cheater, why would he ape rage on somebody that had a dev badge if he were using walls? He'd be able to tell. If he's a serial cheater, most likely he'd be buying something that would tell him whether or not somebody was a dev. It just doesn't make sense to ape rage on a dev if he were cheating. Otherwise, we'd have way more threads than just this. We have no definitive proof either way, and it's only that, you know, BSG basically did its own internal investigation and found no wrongdoing uh, and unbanned the account. The part about this that I find to be strange, logically speaking, is that if it was indeed a false flag, let's say, that he was banned and then unbanned subsequently, it seems very, very suspect to me that it would come mere minutes after someone wearing a dev badge got killed. The timing of that is so unbelievably coincidental that for a situation like that to have been legitimate is almost unbelievable. Almost. The more likely scenario 
is that someone with a dev badge that was playing on Eastern EU servers ended up in a situation where they got got and baby raged and banned a guy because they got killed in a way where he was like, oh, that's bullshit. He must be cheating. My guess would be is that there was a little bit of desync there. We've all died in stairwells to people we never saw. And he figured the guy was hacking and just called it. They do have tools that allow them to do manual bans like that. So the most likely, the most feasible scenario that I can think of is that he hit the button, banned a guy. Someone went, bro, you can't do that. This is all over Reddit now. We got to fix this. They undid it. And then, you know, the BSG employee came out and said, oops, yep, it was just a false alarm. Sorry about that. You know, glitch in the system. We unbanned the account all as well. Something tells me that they're going to have some type of meeting <laughs> about this at BSG HQ in the morning. Anyway, that's what I have for this one. Thank you so much for coming and checking it out. As always, if you would be kind enough to follow me on my socials, at OnePegMG on Twitter, at OnePeg on TikTok, where I stream simultaneously every day between there and twitch.tv slash OnePeg. And as always, if you would be kind enough as to sub the channel here, I would be so very appreciative. Thank you so much for your time. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.